Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue the rebuild of the Merc Cruiser 120 engine. And today we're going to be putting on the oil pump, oil pan, putting that seal on for that oil pan seal, which is actually a four piece seal. And then um, do the valve covers, uh, side plate, the ther and the thermostat. So we'll get a lot more buttoned up here, getting closer to getting a complete engine. So. I didn't really count them, but let me know how many times in the comment you hear me say the word goop. Because uh, I ended up, I did the whole video and then I edited it and realized I must have said goop, I don't know, like 150 times. So anyways, enjoy the video. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing and I'll see you at the end of the video. Bye-bye. No, not bye-bye. Continue watching. Now we got our pump cover on. Let's flip it over. We'll put the oil pump on. Okay, so we got our engine flipped over. You take out this bolt for your, um, your pickup. And it came in the kit was a new Mowling uh, oil pump. And it's part number M-62. And made in the USA, so pretty good there. So here's the new pump right here. So it looks just like the old one. It's almost exactly the same as the old one. So and also it came with a gasket. I cleaned up all around the surfaces, all around for the oil pan and for this as well. So. We should be good there. Let's see, let me put our pump on. Goes into the hole, like that. Line up your gasket. Yes, no, maybe so. That's a bit of a pain in the butt. You get that little bolt in there. Probably more to get the gasket in place. Okay, we got a half inch. Okay, oil pumps on. And like I said, we got this bolt loose here. Take that off goes down to here you can see your pickup bolt goes down onto here and I cleaned this all up already pretty good uh, it looks like gonna need a little bending little turn of the oil pump there Yeah, I might be able just to bend that a little bit. Really like to get that in there as far as possible. like just a little there we go now we're lined up Now we're into this part of the pump the whole way until it hits the stopper there. And now this is straight on. Now we can torque this down. Put a little bit of oil on there. Because everything goes together better with oil. Alright, 
I'm going to take it to the torque according to the according to the book. Okay. Let's check the, all these while we're here. Okay, so they're all torqued down. Going to give it one more cleaning and we'll put the oil pan on. All right, so I cleaned up the oil pan and you can see here, it's, it's a little bit dented in the bottom, but it's not crazy, but I just wanted to confirm that it's not gonna hit the, the pickup. So I took the drain plug out Yeah, look in there. It's roughly about that far from the from the bottom of the pan to there. So this little dent over here, I don't think it's really affecting anything for the oil pickup. So I think we're clear here. So that's good. So the oil pan gasket is actually a four-piece gasket. We'll open it up here and take a look. I'll show you how it all works, or we'll kind of see how it all works together here. Okay, so. Comes with two cork ones, and those go along the side here. Looks like that one goes there. And this one, this shape one, goes over on this side, or like this, or... Oh, okay, there we go. So it goes on like that with this. So the curve goes towards the back here. And you got two rubber ones that go, one goes in the front and one goes into the back. Okay, and the one with the little pointy things here, towards the front, they actually go into little holes. In the front like that, kind of. Let's see the rear one. I'll show you a close up here. So the rear one goes down into this groove that's back here in the back. It's a bit of a weird setup. Kind of over complicated it. It also comes with a drain plug, plastic drain plug cap. So let me show you. Okay, so you got your cork one here. And this one here has the the points sticking out the ends and they go down into the holes here. They line up there and it goes up around and across over to here and you see it overlaps onto the cork. Then the rear one it goes down into this groove that's sitting right here and it lines up with uh, the holes here and overlaps onto the cork. Or would you put the cork on top of it like that? Maybe. Maybe that would work? I don't know. We'll have to see when we go to put it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to goop up all the gaskets and uh, I'll be back. Alright, so we got all the goop on. We got the goop on the oil pan side as well.
Okay. So in the back, there's two bigger bolts in the rear by the rear main seal here. And there's two big ones in the front. So we're going to put those in first and kind of straighten everything up. And these are the other big ones for the front here. They go into, they don't go into the timing cover, but they look like they go into the block here. So. Okay, those are half inches there. Okay, so I got those down. I don't have them tight. So I can move the, the cork gasket around a little bit. Okay, so the rest are all these tiny bolts like this. And go around and put all these in. And I'll continue putting these in and I'll be back. Oil pan is on and bolted down. And I wiped off all the excess, the excess goop that was floating around. But it all went together pretty good, the, the oil pan. So I'm going to move over to the water pump. So... Whenever I was removing the old one, I screwed up and I dropped it and I, and I broke the propeller, part of the propeller. I'm sure it could be okay, but I just didn't want to go through all the effort to rebuild the engine and not have the pump working, but it's still probably a good pump. But uh, what I did is I ordered a, a Merc Cruiser, the correct pump for the engine, for a boat engine or whatever. So one thing was interesting is this had... This is your coolant that goes to your radiator. Then this goes for your heater. So the original one had a rubber cap over top of this. So my new one that I got, it didn't have a rubber cap, but this, this hole was actually closed up. It was all cast over because I guess there's no heat in a boat. So I had to, I stuffed the rag inside here and moved it around and inside here and I drilled it upside down to get make that hole because I plan on putting heat into heat uh, into the rover someday so I'm just going to reuse this cap I'm going to clean it up and put it on there for when we start it up and we run it do a test run to break in the cam so let's go toss this onto the engine okay so Got the gasket on there with the goop, and uh, I gooped it all around. There you go. Water pump's on. Okay, we're gonna be putting on the side cover. I squirted a little oil down into the lifters. You probably don't have to do that, but I just felt like I needed to. But here it is here, the Merc Cruiser side cover, which is actually aluminum, which is pretty nice. So I put a new cork seal in there. I put goop on the, on the head gasket, on the, not the head gasket, but the valve, I don't know what you call this. What is it, some type of cover for the push rod covers or something? Side cover, side cover. I only put a goop on the side cover side. I'm not going to put any on the engine because it'll hold it. It'll, uh, it'll swell up once the oil hits it and everything and the engine's running.
feels like whenever you tighten down the bolts, they actually bought them out and then uh, you're all the way tight, I guess. Because the, the plate itself isn't stopping it. I think it's the actual bolt is bottoming out on that. There we go. Of course, not putting it crazy tight, but enough that it's on there. It looks good, doesn't it? I like that. It's almost like this should be painted in red. The Merc Cruiser, like the lettering. That would look pretty cool. Okay, so let's go next thing. All right, got the valve cover. Cleaned it all up, scraped off the old cleaner, uh, the old gasket and all the goop was on there. So I did have to uh, trim the corners a little bit for the, for the studs. So if you use the studs, give a little warning that you're gonna have to trim that a little bit. So I found this interesting, the new uh, valve cover gasket the Merc Cruiser one has one, two, three, four, five bolts, but it has an extra hole right here. So I guess the Merc Cruisers or maybe the early Chevys didn't have that extra hole, but they got a spot here, but they don't have it. It's not on the block, so I don't know why, but that would be a good question. Put down in the comments. Answer, I mean, down in the comments. So, again, I only put goop on the head side, not on the gap on the... You know what I mean. All right, so you got a thermostat housing. I didn't have any black paint, but it felt like it needed to be painted. It was just uh, plain cast iron before. It wasn't very nice looking, but I figure, what the heck. We'll make it nice looking, but all I had was this dark gray around. I didn't have any black, and I wanted to hit it with actual Rust-Oleum, not some uh, just cheapy black paint. So I used the Rust-Oleum can I had, made it gray. It looks kind of fancy, huh? Good enough. So we have an in, two outlets on these side on the on both sides. One's for the heating, and one was for the the temperature gauge they had in there. So I don't know. Oops. So the thermostat's now on there. The housing. And before I had to I had to take off the ends here, I used it to paint as well. One side was the for the heater side, this had the heat side over here. It had to go out and this side here had a, a temperature gauge, some type of sensor temperature gauge on this side. You could see it there and over here, but it's it twists right here, and I have a feeling it probably would leak anyways. So i got to get some fittings for here because over here, I'm probably just going to come from here and make a loop down to water to the water pump right here. So just for now, until I hook up heat in the truck. So I'm going to go and get some new fittings for over here. So then we can make the loop here. And then over here, I'm probably just going to put a cap in here for now, just a plug. So until I'm going to get, uh, I'll get the, I, on the rover, when I take the thermos, the temperature gauge out, I'll see if it'll fit in through this hole. If it does, then we're, we're good to go there. But when we go do the startup, I don't want to do that. So let me uh, interrupt myself. So what I ended up doing is I put a plug on this side. So to plug it off with a little bit of sealant around it. And this side, I bought this. This is from a small block Chevy. I think it's a three-quarter inch, both sides are a three-quarter inch NPT thread. And then this had a little come over to here, and it was just was a, a half-inch hose, I think. And I looped it over to the water pump because if you don't have this loop right here, it's going to overheat your engine because you need to have some type of bypass for the water pump to go through until the thermostat opens. So, and this is actually from a Jeep Cherokee, and um, I don't, I'm not sure what the part number was, but... 
So it fit perfectly right around here in a bend. So back to me talking. The engine itself, if you're looking at it as a Land Rover, appears very similar to where the original Volt, uh, Land Rover one is. So let me adjust there. So the thermostat's very similar to the location of where the Land Rover one is. So this one, this engine came with one of these that sat on here like this. And that doesn't even go towards the direction that we want to go for the Land Rover's uh, thermos, for the radiator. So as I was doing searching, I found this one. You can actually get them in all different shapes. They come out different angles and different sizes and everything. So this one here... We'll go on there like that, and it'll actually come straight up, like as uh, to go to the Land Rover one. So it should get us pretty close. It might not be the perfect angle because it's actually turned a little bit towards this way, I guess. But when we put it on here, eh, it kind of goes kind of straight, but we'll see how it goes. But it'll be enough that I think the hose will compensate for it. So I'm just going to throw this on for now, but I'm not going to goop it all up right now. I'm just going to throw it on because I still have to go to the local auto parts store and pick up a thermostat for it. So the thermostat came in for the engine. So what I ended up doing is I got a... It's a standard brand, but it's part number 170, and it's a 180-degree thermostat, which uh, stock would have been 195, according to the uh, to the books and everything. But I went with 180, maybe a little bit cooler, but the actual boat, Merc Cruiser, actually goes down to 160, 165 thermostat temperature, Fahrenheit temperature. But I figure 180 might be good for a car since we're going to have a lots of cooling and everything. So let's see how we can install it. So it goes and it has a little groove around here. Fits right down in. And I did test this. So it does open at like 185, 190 it opens up. So I think it should work just fine. I'm going to get some goop, put it on the gasket. So I ended up putting goop around the, the part there because this is kind of rough over here. I wanted to make sure that it got a good amount of goop on there. And I put some on the lid. So the thermostat's installed. We're good here with the seal. And this is pretty neat. It has an extra bung up on top here. I guess for if you want to put a temperature gauge in there or something. But uh, we're just going to... I'm going to put a little bit of some thread sealing around this and put that in there. Okay, that's the end of this video. And... Thank you for liking, subscribing. You guys are awesome, always awesome, and you guys always stay awesome. So I thank you very much. The next video, it'll be more on the engine that will be coming up in a few days. So thank you very much. Have a good one and stay awesome. Bye-bye.